Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this second part of the video, we're going to finish up our discussion on optimization problems. So if you remember, we left off at this note and theorem. The argument that we used in the previous three examples, we could have also have stated that the local, and local maximum and local minimum were actually absolute minimum and an absolute maximum. So this theorem is a slight variant of the first derivative test for local extrema, but it's stated for absolute extreme values. So the theorem says, let C be a critical number, and the function is continuous, f of x, on some interval. If the first derivative is positive when x is less than C, and the first derivative is uh, less than zero if x is greater than C, then f of c is an absolute maximum for the function. So this is stating that if x equals c is the critical number, and it's the only critical number on this interval, and your derivative is positive on the left side of c, and the derivative is negative on the right side of c, then your critical value is really not just a local max, it's an absolute maximum. And the second statement is just the opposite. If the derivative is negative on the left side of C, if the derivative is positive on the right side of C, then f of C is an absolute minimum for the exact same reasons. So we're going to use this statement when we talk about our last few examples in the section. So example four, the point closest to a parabola is asking us to find a point on the parabola, y squared equals 2x, that is the closest to the point 1 comma 4. So to approach this problem, we're asked to find the closest point to 1 comma 4. So we want to minimize the distance. So the idea is let d represent the distance. from the point 1 comma 4 to any point x comma y on the parabola which is y squared equals 2x. So if d is representing the distance then we can use the distance formula To find D. Alright, so remember from pre-calculus that the distance D is the square root of the difference between the x values between our two points on or one point on the parabola and our other point 1 comma 4. So x minus 1 all squared plus the same for the y values, y subtract 4 all squared. Now we want to minimize d, so we want to take the derivative of d to find the, the critical numbers, but it's in terms of two variables again. So let's use the equation of the parabola, y squared equals 2x, which means x is equal to 1 half y squared. So now let's substitute x equals 1 half y squared into the equation for distance. Okay, so then this gives us d equals the square root. Take the x and replace it with 1 half y squared and subtract 1 all squared plus y subtract 4 all squared. So this is the distance between um, the points x comma y and 1 comma 4 but the distance is only in terms of y instead. But if we square both sides we get an expression that does not include this square root. So d squared equals 1 half y squared subtract 1 all to the second plus y minus 4 all to the second. 
we need to minimize the distance because we want to find the closest point. So minimize the distance D, which can be achieved by minimizing the square of the distance. So in other words, if we want to minimize the distance d, we can also minimize the square of the distance at the same time. So instead of dealing with this function that involves the square roots, we're going to call um, what's on the right side of, what, of, of the equation, whatever d squared is equal to, we're going to call that the function, the objective function that we want to minimize. So f of y is equal to 1 half y squared minus 1, all to the second plus y minus 4 all to the second. Now find the critical numbers of f of y by finding its derivative. So this is a much easier function to find the derivative of. We're going to need to use the power rule and chain rule. So power 2 times 1 half y squared minus 1 to the first power times the derivative of the inside function is y plus 2 times y minus 4 times 1 and this will simplify to y cubed minus 8 so notice that y must be 2 for the derivative to be equal to 0 so that is a critical number And that the derivative is always defined, so f prime of y will never be undefined. So notice that this is the only critical number, y equals 2. So we can use the second derivative test. So take the second derivative, f double prime of y is equal to 3y squared. And notice that f double prime of 2 at the critical number, y equals 2, is equal to 3 times 2 squared, which gives you 12, positive 12. So that means the graph opens up. So if the graph is opening up, that means that there is a local minimum when y equals 2. Okay, but using that previous theorem, if this is the only critical number and you have found out that it's a local minimum at y equals 2, then it's actually an absolute minimum. when y equals 2. So now we just need to find out what is the x-coordinate. So go back and replace y with equal to 2. So 1 half times 2 squared and that will tell you x is equal to 2. So the closest point to 1 comma 4 is 2 comma 2 on the parabola. So now let's try example 5. Example 5 is there's a rectangle that's inscribed in a semicircle that has radius 2. What is the largest area that the rectangle can have? And what are the dimensions of the rectangle? All right, so since the rectangle is going to be symmetric, it makes a lot of sense to put the center of the rectangle or the, the center of the base of the rectangle right at the origin. So then we're going to let x denote the distance 
from the origin. To the rectangle's corner. In quadrant one. Alright, so in other words, we're letting this be the distance x, so from the corner of the rectangle to the origin, this is going to be, that distance is x. So notice that x must be between 0 and no larger than 2. So note that x is greater than 0, but less than 2. We need to find the height, to so find the height of the rectangle. When the width is 2x. So notice that we can use symmetry. If this length is x, then this length is also x. And that's a length of 2x for the entire rectangle. Now let's find out what the height is using the Pythagorean theorem. So since the radius of the semicircle is 2, that's this length, where the semicircle and the rectangle are intersecting, so this is what it means to take a rectangle and inscribe it. So the length of this hypotenuse is 2, and you have a right triangle. So you'll find out that the height of the rectangle is the square root of 4 subtract x squared. Alright, so now let's find the maximum area of the rectangle inscribed in the semicircle. So the area will only involve the variable x. The length of the rectangle was 2x. We talked about that a second ago, why it's 2x. And the width is the height of the rectangle, and we found that out using the Pythagorean theorem. So the width was the square root of 4 subtract x squared. So now we have the area is 2x times the square root of 4 subtract x squared, or 2x times 4 subtract x squared to the 1 half power. Find the critical numbers of a of x. So we're going to need to use the product rule and chain rule and power rule. The derivative of a is 2x times the derivative of the second times the derivative of the inside function plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which will be just 2. So simplify, the 2's will cancel out. You'll have negative 2x squared times 4 minus x squared to the negative half plus 2 times 4 minus x squared to the positive half. So we want to find the critical numbers, so let's simplify as far as possible for a prime of x. Notice that you can factor out a negative 2 and a 4 minus x squared to the negative half. And that means what is remaining will be an x squared minus 4 minus x squared to the first power, because we factor out negative half from 1, from 1 half power. So then simplify on the inside of the brackets. 
negative 2 times 4 minus x squared to the negative half times 2x squared minus 4. And then you can factor out a 2, so that will make it negative 4. 4 minus x squared to the negative half, and then x squared minus 2. Okay, so now rewrite this so that the negative half is really a radical in the denominator. So a prime of x is equal to negative 4 times x squared subtract 2 divided by 4 minus x squared to the positive half, which of course is the square root in the denominator. Alright, so now notice that there are critical numbers whenever a prime of x is equal to 0, which implies that the numerator is 0, which gives us x is equal to plus or minus radical 2. Now, remember that the domain for x was between 0 and 2. So x cannot be negative radical 2 but it can be positive radical 2. So this is a critical number. And then also, the derivative is undefined when the, not, when the denominator is 0. So 4 minus x squared to the half equals 0 will give you x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. And keep in mind that 2 is not possible, nor is x equals negative 2. So we only have one critical number on the interval 0 to 2. And now let's use the first derivative test. For local extrema. So this involves a sign chart, or a number line, plotting your critical numbers on the sign chart. So this sign chart is for a prime of x. The critical number goes on the sign chart. So our domain was from 0 to 2, and the critical number was square root of 2. x cannot be less than 0, and x cannot be greater than 2. So our test values, let's use x equals 1. Square root of 2 is about 1.41, so let's use x equals 1.5 for the other test value a prime of 1 is positive, so the area is increasing between 0 and radical 2, and a prime of 1.5 is negative, and that means your area is decreasing after radical 2. So using the sign chart, we can identify that there is a local maximum whenever x is equal to radical 2. So the largest area of the rectangle inscribed is um, 2 times x so 2 times radical 2 times 4 minus x squared, so radical 2 squared, and that's to the 1 half power, and you'll find out that the area is 4 units, square units. So if 
x is representing the distance between the origin and the corner of the rectangle is radical 2. Then 2 radical 2 is the entire length of the rectangle, and this was the height of the rectangle, 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. So the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in a circle, a semicircle of radius 2, is 4 square units. Okay, so that finished up two problems involving geometry and optimization. The last example in the section is involving business and economics. So in the previous chapter, we discussed the idea of a marginal cost. Marginal cost was the derivative of the cost function. So if c of x is the cost function and x is representing the um, amount of units produced for a certain product, marginal cost is the rate of change of the cost function with respect to x. So in other words, c prime of x is the marginal cost function. So now we're going to talk more about economics and business. Suppose that you have a marketing of a certain product occurring. Lowercase p of x represents the price per unit that the company can sell x units. Lowercase p is called the demand function and we can expect it to be a decreasing function. If x units are sold, price per unit is p of x. So if you want to calculate revenue, revenue is how many units are sold times the price that you are selling those products at. So r is called the revenue function, capital R, and its derivative is called the marginal revenue function. And it's the rate of change of the revenue with respect to the number of items sold. So then finally, one more definition. If x is the unit sold, then you have profit, which is denoted as a capital P of x. And profit is always revenue, subtract cost. And then you have marginal profit function, which is the derivative of profit. So with these definitions in mind, we're going to approach the last example. So example six, we're going to maximize revenue. A store has been selling 200 DVD burners a week at $350 each. A market survey indicates that each $10 rebate offered to buyers, the number of units sold will increase by 20 a week. So they decrease by $10 each, and then they'll increase sales by 20 a week. Find the demand function, so that's p of x, lowercase p of x, and the revenue function, and then how large a re rebate should be for the store to maximize its revenue. All right, so the variable should be the number of DVD burners sold in a week. Then the weekly increase in sales is 2x minus 200. So now we're going to come up with the um, demand function, lowercase p of x. For each increase of 20 units a week, notice that the price is decreased by 10 or by $20. Alright, 
What this means is that p of x, which is the demand function, or price, it is $350 subtract 10 divided by 20 times x minus 200 which if you simplify after distributing you'll find that the price is 450 subtract 1 half x so once we have the demand function now we can calculate the revenue revenue is always calculated as price times quantity. So R of X is X times price, which we just found out P of X is 450 subtract 1 half X. So revenue will be 450 X subtract 1 half X squared. So if this is the revenue function and we want to maximize the revenue, then we need to find the critical numbers. So find the critical numbers of the revenue function. So since r of x is a polynomial, it won't be very difficult to find the derivative or the critical numbers. The derivative is 450, subtract so x. The R prime will never be undefined, but it can equal zero. And of course, this gives us x equals 450. So this is the only critical number that we have. So now notice that we're going to use the second derivative test to find the second derivative. And it is negative one always so the second derivative is always going to be negative so r double prime of 450 so if you substitute in the critical number it will always be negative one so negative and there is a local maximum when x equals 450 DVD burners. So if we found out that if there are 450 DVD burners sold, then the revenue will be maximized. If it's the only, if 450 was the only critical number and it is a truly a local maximum, it really is an absolute maximum. So now the rest is how large of a rebate should the store offer? So let's go back to price. Price at 450 DVD burners sold would be 450 subtract one half times 450. And this will turn out to be $225. That's the price. And this means the rebate would be $350 minus $225 or $125 to maximize revenue. So we found out the rebate, we found out the number of sales, and we also maximize the revenue at the same time. So this finishes up the section. If you have any questions about the two problems involving geometry or this problem involving economics and business, please let me know. And if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section on optimization problems, please let me know as well. And I'll see you at the next video.